What do you think is the most important quality to have if you want to become a successful engineer? Now, you might think that it is to be smart and good at math and science and physics and all that. And while that is all true, I think there is something else. I think that your ability to stick with something over a prolonged period of time will make you or break you. And that is actually called grit. Grit is about holding a high level of performance for a prolonged period of time. So can you perform tasks that are really difficult and continue to complete them? That really is what an engineering degree is. If you stick around to the end of the video, we're actually going to have a three question self assessment quiz that'll help you determine your grit score and help you figure out if you need to improve on this core core quality that is required in order to be a successful engineer and to actually even complete your engineering degree. But first of all, why is grit so important and why do I feel that it is so important? My name is Nended. I'm an electrical engineer. I have my master's as well and I currently work as a manager in the power industry and I feel that it's important because if you don't have this skill, then you're going to just quit things way too easy. And actually a big part of you getting your engineering degree is figuring out and uh, figuring out to yourself and to your college and to your peers, do I have enough of the grit to learn and succeed for a prolonged period of time? Because really, when you get into the real world, you're working on projects that take a long time with many, many different challenges. Not only projects, you're also working with people and there are challenges with all of these different things. And are you a person who can just find the strength and push through or do you kind of recede and quit? And engineering is not a game about quitters. It is a game about pushing on and being persistent and being gritty. If you're still in school, your degree degree will test you. So I remember as an undergrad, I was taking a power systems class. And in this class, it really tested me and my desire to be in this field. And in fact, I ended up taking this class twice because I didn't do so well the first time. So I could have quit and switch majors, which I did consider doing. I looked into going to biomedical or chemical, but I didn't. I wanted to be in this field and I came back. I hit the books harder and removed my distractions that were a part of my life at the time. And guess what? I passed the class and now here I am as an engineering manager working in the power industry. That is an example of grit. Another story is when I was getting my master's, I was delayed my graduation by about six months because I didn't finish my thesis. And that was one of the most difficult things I had to do as a, as a student. So I came back in and I was in the library going till two, three in the morning every single day for about three months straight in order to complete this thesis and make it strong enough and presentable enough to my PhD mentors that were overseeing my studies. That was another sign. And the feeling when you complete something that you've put a lot of effort and time into it that's helped you grow is unlike any other. I remember those more than anything else. So if you've experienced this before in your life, you'll know the feeling. There is no way to duplicate this. Have you stuck with something long enough to go through the grind, to want to pull your hair out, to curse the world, but then have you come out on top at the end of that? That's what's required in engineering. You have to be gritty. Now, don't fall into the talent trap, okay? Oftentimes, we see successful people and all you see is that last little story. So such and such just sold their company for $100 million. Yay. You know what? But it might have taken that person 20, 30 years to get to this point. We also think maybe this person's a natural or a genius. And I mean, to be an engineering, you do have to have high uh, aptitude to complete the assignments and the problems and understanding. But more than that, there are people who will be more talented than you, smarter than you. And that's all well and good. But guess what? Hard work beats talent every single day. And I've heard this saying before and it's so true. And I fall into this trap before. I've thought to myself, hey, I'm I'm smart at this. I can, I'm good at math. I'm good at physics. I'll figure this out. Or hey, I'm good at this sport. I, I, I'm naturally athletically inclined. I should get this, pick this up easy. But guess what? You don't. When you start to rely on your core talent and just your innate ability only without working hard, you're going to fail. And engineering is a combination of those two. You do need to have some innate ability to be able to go through this because as you'll find out, a lot of your peers, if you're in school, will be dropping out left and right. It's not that they're not smart enough. Many of them are more than capable of doing it. It's just that they don't want to stick with it. They're not gritty enough. So having grit is about finding something that you really believe in, passion, and something that you want to do, and persevering. It's passion and perseverance. And this is straight out of a book that I'm reading right now called Grit by Angela Duckworth. If you want some more information, I'll post a link below for you. It's more about stamina than intensity. So if you can picture a an endurance runner versus a 
sprinter. An endurance runner has to keep running this same pace, you know, maybe a, a, a seven minute mile or an eight minute mile for an entire marathon, which is what, 26.2 miles or something like that, versus a sprinter has to just go as fast as they possibly can for 100 meters. Being gritty and having engineering as a career is about being the endurance runner, the long distance runner. It's all a long game. All of these practices that you're doing now, all these little classes, all these problems that you're taking in, if you're in your career right now, all of the projects that you're doing, all these new experiences that you're receiving, those all help you succeed in the future, which ultimately is what will help you get hired if you're looking for an engineering job when you get when you graduate and what will help you increase in your career to where your earnings get to a point where you can live a comfortable lifestyle. It's an endurance race. It's not a sprint. So if you start something and you're still working on it in a year, that's grit, right? If you quit it after a week or a month or so, that's not. Many times people have a grandiose idea of, hey, I'm going to get my myself in shape this year. So what do they do in January? All the gyms are full. People go to the gym and they start working out. Well, guess what? That might only last for two weeks. The gyms start to decrease. If anybody's ever been a member of a gym and seen this phenomenon, it's incredible. The gyms are full in January, maybe February, but by March, April, May, they start dwindling down. Okay, so people have left. They're not passionate about it. They have this idea that they want to get in shape, but they're not willing to sacrifice and commit. So from Angela's book, there is a grit test that you can take to determine how greedy you are. But I've actually broken it down for our purposes here in the engineering career field. And I've broken it down to three questions. Follow along with me and ask yourself these questions and take the self-assessment quiz with me right now. So for each statement, rate yourself from one to five, where one is not like me at all, two, rarely like me, three, sometimes like me, four, often I like me, or five, very much like me. And the first question is, I finish what I start, even when it becomes challenging or tedious. Rate yourself from one to five. Second question is, setbacks and failures do not stop me from pursuing my engineering goals. Three, I stay committed to long-term projects even when progress is slow. Okay, so now what you have to do is add up your scores from all three questions for a possible score, the highest being 15 and three being the lowest, right? So here are the results. So 13 to 15 means you have high grit. You have a strong perseverance and passion, making you well-suited for long-term success in your engineering career. Good for you. You should give yourself a pat on the back. I, myself, was not in the high grit score, so this is something that I'm actually working on personally, too. Very good. 10 to 12, this is where I scored. You have moderate grit. You show resilience and commitment, but may need extra motivation during prolonged challenges. And if you scored nine or below, you are developing your grit, meaning you're building persistence and trying to stay motivated through obstacles, which will help you grow in your engineering journey. Really, this is where if you're nine or below, you have to work on your grit. So how do you improve your grit score? The answer to that is easy. Pick one thing that you want to focus on, whether that is a career oriented thing or focusing on a class or learning a new skill or even just a semester. So say to yourself this semester, I'm going to study, you know, 25 hours extra per week or whatever it is, or I will go to the gym for an entire year. Actually stick with your long-term commitment. That is what's required in order for you to start boosting your score. Join a club or learn a language maybe. It doesn't have to be exactly related to engineering and a class, but anything that will help you just improve your 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 idea and your, your gritty mentality, your stick-through mentality. Prove to yourself that yes, you can do it. Whether that's taking a dance class or being a part of a club or whatever it is, okay? Or it might just be, hey, I failed this class. I'm thinking of dropping out in engineering. You know what? I'm going to stick through it because I'm going to be better off when I actually finish. It'll be better for me and my life and my future, and I'm going to succeed. That's the mentality you want to have. So if you're thinking about quitting, ask yourself why. And if there's a valid reason and this is really not for you, that's fine too. But if it's just the fact that maybe you're not fully committed, well, I hope this video helps you out and gets you on your way. If you liked what you heard, please give me a like and a subscribe and tell me what you scored below in your test. I look forward to talking to you on the next one. Thank you.